Hey guys, how's it going today? Today I'm going to get into how to catch the top four most targeted species of fish in the BWCA. And when I'm talking the four species, the four top targeted species in this area, I'm talking smallmouth bass, northern pike, lake trout, and of course walleyes. That's the top four. Now if you watch to the end of this video, I also have a fifth species that I'm going to share at the end, so stay tuned for that. My son and I just returned from a trip from up there and we were super successful on a bunch of different species, targeting them specifically, and that's what I wanna show you guys how to do. Uh, that being said, if you don't know what the BWCA is, it's called the Boundary Waters Canoe Area Wilderness, or just BWCA for short. It's a really cool area, almost two million acres of preserved wilderness in northeastern Minnesota. It lies just on the border of, of Canada and it's filled with hundreds and hundreds of super clean, clear, rocky Canadian shield type glacial lakes. And these lakes are full of fish and they are some of the least pressured fish in the lower 48. So some of these fish have absolutely never seen a lure in their life. So it's a it's a great fishery. Also, there's a lot of lakes in the area, in the surrounding area, not just inside the BWCA that offer great fishing and easier access. And for the purpose of this video, I'm gonna talk about all lakes in the area and refer to all of them as the BWCA. So to fish in this area, you may need to know the basics of wilderness camping. And I'm not gonna cover that in this video. I'm gonna let you watch some other YouTube videos on the camping part. We're just covering fishing. now. Before we get into the actual fish themselves, I would really like to get into some of the gear and some of the wilderness specific um, stuff that we're gonna bring on this trip that kind of pertain to all the species. And before we get into the gear, I will let you know, I'm gonna link all this gear and tackle down below in the description so you can find any of the stuff I'm talking about here in the links in the description. So when I go to the Boundary Waters, I only need two rods really, and these are the two most important ones you can bring. Number one is gonna be my six foot six to seven foot medium light fast action graphite spinning rod. This is gonna cover a lot of different finesse situations that you're gonna run into up there. You know, throwing Ned rigs for smallmouth, eighth ounce jigs for walleyes, uh, light slip bobber rigs. This one's gonna cover it. Now, I also bring along a medium or medium heavy uh, six foot six to seven foot spinning rod as well. And that's to cover bigger swim baits, you know, spoons, stuff like that you're, you're throwing for pike. Uh, I've got this one spooled with a 2000 Daiwa Rivros, and I've got this one uh, spooled up with a 2500 Daiwa Regal. Both great reels. I'll link those in the description. I've got 10 pound braid on my medium light. I've got 15 pound braid on my medium, and that should cover your rods. Another item you're gonna need is some kind of tackle bag, and this one, I just bought for this trip and we took it up there last week and it was absolutely fantastic. This is the Pissy Fun uh, Tackle Backpack. And the reason I like it is it's got nice padding here. It's got backpack straps. It's got a nice open top in there to put like a spools of line. You know, any even your lunch can go in the top pocket. You've got a spot for four 3,600 tackle boxes down here and then you've got tons of side pockets. So I go a little bit heavy on tackle when I go into the Boundary Waters compared to some people. This is a perfect setup for me. And even if you wanna go light, you can double this as like a day pack. And like I said, put all kinds of other items in here like your first aid kit and there's tons of room. So it's great for going over portages and we had great luck with this pack. So another thing you're gonna need, if you ever wanna anchor up in the Boundary Waters, is a simple anchor rope and basketball net. And the reason we use this is no one wants to carry an anchor over portages. So we usually bring two. We bring one for the bow, one for the stern. You pick up a rock at the end of your portage, put it in the net, in the basketball net, and then I clip it shut with a little carabiner. And now you've got an anchor that you didn't have to carry over that portage. All right, guys, here's the big one for me. This is the game changer when it comes to the boundary waters, and that is sonar. This is a bit controversial. Some people don't want to bring their sonar with. They want to have that wilderness experience, and they don't want to have it along. I want to have the wilderness experience, but I also want to catch a lot of fish. And I'm telling you right now, if we had not brought this along, we would not have caught half of the fish that we caught on this trip. Now, to do 
a boundary water strip where you're portaging with sonar, you have to have a special setup for that. There's a bracket on my canoe that this just slides right into. And all I have to do is tighten this nut down and I'm installed. So I can fold this whole setup up in my pack and then install it on the canoe when I get to the end of my portage. And then this arm is also, I can fold this right up. I can slide this together. I can fold my transducer alongside of it and it fits right in my pack. And then this arm just goes in the water as I fish. And you can bring an ice fishing type transducer, but the problem is when you're moving, it's gonna swing back and not work. This one works as I'm trolling, as I'm moving, I can see what's going on down there. It's an absolutely great system. So I will link this in the description as well. I just happen to have this Lowrance Hook 7 and that's what I'm using, but uh, they make some really good, more portable units that are a little bit smaller. Garmin makes a really good one. Forgot what it's called, but I'll link it in the description. Tons of people use it in the boundary waters. So, And I'm running this off of my Vexilar lithium nine amp hour battery. And I tested this out before I left and I put this on demo mode like it is now. And I ran it for 24 hours straight, didn't run out of battery. So I think you could really get away with a nine, vo uh, nine amp hour lithium battery for most of a trip, if not the whole trip. And it's very light, very packable. All right, another item you're gonna wanna bring is an old fashioned chain stringer. We don't have live wells in the boundary waters when we're canoeing. This is a great way to keep your catch alive and in the water. Um, and it just keeps them fresh, keeps them cold. All right, as far as live bait goes, leeches are probably the number one bait to take to the boundary waters for all species. They're easy to take care of. You just keep them in one of these leech lockers, keep them in the water. And when you move, you can pull them out of the water, set them in your canoe so they're not dragging. Then just drop them in the water again. Some guys bring crawlers, which I did. And you just have to be aware that you need to keep those crawlers cool. Either put them in the shade and kind of bury them with some moss to keep them cool. You can keep them in your cooler if you have ice, but crawlers are another option. Minnows are much tougher to move around. They're much tougher to bring into wilderness areas. So a lot of guys just stick with the leeches and crawlers. All right, guys, now that we have gear covered, let's get into the fish. Let's start with lake trout. If there's a fish that really embodies what the Boundary Waters is all about, it's the lake trout. These fish only live in the coldest, clearest, deepest lakes in the area, and they're one of the most fun fish to catch. They're delicious, hard fighting, aggressive fish, and they can grow to really, really large sizes. So lake trout are roamers, basically. They can be pelagic, meaning they can, they can roam anywhere in the basin and open water. They can relate to structure. They can be shallow, they can be deep. So oftentimes they're very hard to pinpoint, uh, which is why trolling is typically the, the best way to catch lake trout. And that's what we did in the, on this last trip. So trolling shallow for lake trout is really easy. Just find any kind of good sized crankbait that dives to 10 to 15 feet, fish around you know those 10 to 20 foot breaks in the springtime when those fish are shallow, and you probably have some pretty good luck uh, catching them. And you can also troll heavier spoons like little Cleos and stuff as well. I like to set up for lake trout right in that 1.7 to 2 miles an hour. And that's another great reason to bring a sonar with a GPS like the one I brought. You can actually tell your speed and that's going to help you dial in that troll. Now when you're trolling deep for lake trout, well, let's go check it out. I'll, I took a video while we were up there and I'll show you exactly how we were catching them on uh, snap weights to get our baits down and uh, limit out on a nice batch of Lakers. Lake trout on. First one finally. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, lake trout in the box. With that weight. Yep. 20 feet deep. That's where they want to be. Beautiful little eater lake trout. I'm gonna try not to flip try this one. Drop it. Try not to flip this one in the lake like I did with Jackson's walleye. But that is a cool fish. 20 feet deep. We're using a three ounce snap weight and a spoon. That's the first one, but we lost two already, so I think we're on them. Fish out. Okay. Well, when you get to the sinker, swing your rod back to me and then lift. Okay. He's fighting hard. He might be a bigger one. 
<laughs> okay. I'll just lift your out tip. Yeah! Nice! That's yeah, the biggest one yet. Awesome. He's fought hard. Yes, these are way better than those little small ones. Hooked up to another laker. Ooh, that one's a little bigger. Ooh, good thing I netted him. He came right off. Good job, Dad. Thanks. Another good eater. Ta -da. Hey, 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 lake trout limit. All right, we just finished up our limit of lakers and I'm gonna show you exactly how we caught these fish. We came, uh, we did start shallow and the fish just weren't shallow. We tried casting and all we were catching was smallmouth, but to go deeper in the boundary waters, <clears throat> the easiest way to do that is with snap weights. So all I've got here is my clip and a ring and then these um, slip in, snap weights, which are really slick because you can change the size on them super easy. I'll leave a link for this stuff in the description, but I've got that only about five feet ahead of my bait on an eight pound leader, which in this case, our best bait was these cast masters. We tried a couple other spoons, but the cast masters were definitely the deal today. So just that snap weight, I was going with about two ounces, uh, two to three ounces, and we were getting down to about 20 feet and that's where the fish were. So we just kept coming over this reef back and forth and uh, that seemed to do the trick. So that was a fun time, huh bud? Yeah. So there you have it. Pretty easy to get those snap weights. Just clip them on the line ahead of your spoon or your crankbait, get that extra depth. So there's other ways to get your bait down there as well. You know, if those fish are hanging in that 25 to 30 foot, you can use a, like a rappel, a tail dancer, a deep diving stick bait to get that bait down there, especially on light braid, that's gonna hit the, like that 20 plus foot. And uh, typically that's as deep as you're gonna find lake trout oftentimes up here. They're gonna suspend at that thermocline 20 to 25 feet. That's where the ciscos hang out. And you can troll at that depth, you know, with either the snap weights or a deep diving crankbait, even in the summertime over the basin and catch these lake trout. You can catch them in the springtime casting spoons up on the shoreline as well, but as, as far as catching a lot of lake trout consistently, trolling is the way to go. All right, let's move on to smallmouth bass. Smallmouth are found in most lakes in the BWCA and sometimes in really good numbers and really good size. The nice thing about smallmouth is they can be caught throughout the day in any conditions, shallow water most of the year. Um, rocks are almost always the key for smallmouth. You wanna be fishing rocks and especially any rocks that are on a flat and then towards the edge of that flat where it starts to drop into deeper water, that's a great place to start for smallies. So casting jigs, casting Ned rigs, um, casting small spinners, uh, wacky rigged Senkos, or my personal favorite paddle tail swim baits are all great ways to catch smallmouth. Uh, there's almost so many ways to catch them on artificials that I really recommend you just bring a few of your favorites that you're confident in. Otherwise, you're gonna end up bringing almost too much gear. So just take three or four methods that you're confident in and start with those. Now, they can also be caught really, really uh, easily on live bait. It's a great way to keep kids busy, you know, just put a leech on a slip bobber on the edge of one of those rock flats and hang on, because you're gonna catch smallmouth. Now, later in the summer, these smallmouth may move deeper during the day and you can catch them on like a drop shot rig on the edges of some of the, the deeper rock humps. Uh, but in the evening and morning, they will move shallow and it's prime time for a really good top water bite. So bring those Zara spooks, bring those whopper ploppers and hit those evening, uh, evening bites up in the shallow water on those rock shoals. And that can be an absolute blast as well. All right, on to the Northern Pike the most aggressive, toothiest fish of the bunch. So to find pike in any lake, if it has weeds, start there. Pike are weed fish. They love to hang in those weeds and ambush prey. And starting in the spring, you can find them in the backs of the muddiest, shallowest bays where the weeds are just starting to come up. Um, and they'll be in even a couple feet of water, but they may be very spooky. Uh, so you gotta back off of them and make long casts but it's a great place to start catching them in the weeds. And then as the summer progresses, they're gonna move out 
away from those shallow bays and out to the edges of deeper cabbage beds. And they'll stay there the whole summer as long as there's good weed growth and cool enough water. Now some lakes may not have weeds at all in the boundary waters. And on those lakes, you wanna fish those rocky points with big boulders on them. And anywhere there's vertical structure, so like fallen trees is another place to catch pike. They like to have somewhere to hide in between the rocks or in tree branches or weeds to ambush their prey. after our first one right away right here and we came back and I just saw a giant and then hooked this one. I'm gonna measure this one right now and see how long it is. It's a nice fish. Caught that fish on a mini double cowgirl which is a pretty sweet pike bait. I figured it would work up here. Sure enough it did. We're gonna let this fish go. So pike can be caught by casting or trolling. I prefer to cast for them. Uh, my favorite casting baits would be number one a uh, large bucktail or map spinner. Number two, probably a uh, paddle tail swim bait on a heavy jig head and probably something in the five to six inch range. And, uh, and then number three would be some kind of jerk bait. So like a husky jerk uh, or some kind of, you know, any kind of stick bait that, that mimics a, a bait fish. They really key in on those with that jerk pause, jerk pause retrieve. As far as trolling, you can also troll Troll those baits, the husky jerks, the stick baits, um, and crank baits, and then you can also troll heavier spoons like little Cleos, Doctor Spoons, Daredevils, uh, and that can be super productive for covering water as well. With pike anywhere, be sure to use a, a wire leader or heavy fluorocarbon leader if you don't want to get bait bit off and lose lures, because uh, these fish will cut your line with the teeth. So just make sure you've got something heavy on the front of that bait if you're targeting those pike. Now the fish we've all been waiting for, of course, is the iconic walleye. If you wanna catch a lot of walleyes, especially on any clear lake, you're probably going to have to fish until dark. Uh, walleyes are nighttime feeding fish. They really stay fairly dormant oftentimes until the last hour of light. A slip bobber and a leech has probably accounted for more walleyes than all other methods combined. The reason is simple, it's uh, attractive to walleyes any time of year. It's an easy live bait to carry in. Um, you can position your bait exactly where you want it. And the biggest factor up here is you don't get snagged up. If you're running Lindy rigs on some of these rock piles and stuff, you're going to lose a lot of rigs because there's just so many rocks. So that's one of the reasons uh, slip bobbers outperform a lot of bottom techniques. All you really have to do is anchor up in like 15 feet of water on any rock point uh, an hour before dark, two hours before dark, and just set up those slip bobbers so they're a foot to two feet off the bottom with that leech just hovering above the bottom and just wait, wait them out. And they will move up onto those rocks to feed in the evening. So you're gonna probably catch walleyes in the boundary waters doing this. It's, it's one of the most reliable uh, fishing techniques up there. And you'll probably catch some smallmouth and stuff too while you're waiting, uh, very likely. Now, just because walleyes are a nighttime feeding fish doesn't mean you can't catch them during the day. And uh, we actually had some really good luck the last couple trips up there trolling the deeper edges of drop-offs and rock piles with crawler harnesses. So bring some one ounce bottom bouncers or some three quarter to one ounce slip weights and just set up a troll at one to 1.5 miles an hour, even a drift across, you know, just down a bank that has a lot of rock on it and just uh, kind of tap the bottom once in a while with that weight, but you don't need to drag the weight on the bottom. You can be above bottom, and that spinner just hovers along with that blade spinning, and you, you can just cover a ton of water with that technique, and you're gonna find some aggressive walleyes even during the daytime. Well, Jackson and I are on our way into the Boundary Waters this morning, and uh, we're getting onto the portage here in a little bit. Did pretty well yesterday on the smallmouth, but the wind was terrible on this lake. I mean, it was like 30, 40 mile an hour gusts, but we still managed to catch about a dozen nice smallies, get enough for dinner. So today we're actually going into the Boundary Waters. We're almost to the portage. 
and hopefully this will be a really good fishing in here where we're going. So. All right, this is how you take a rest with the canoe when you're portaging. Just find a branch you can lean your canoe up on, get out from underneath it, then you can step right back in. And don't forget to bring your bug spray and your head net. All the mosquitoes, buddy. <laughs> Beautiful lake, though. Jackson's got a fish on. Good job, buddy. I'm gonna extend the net here, so I'll just bring them up next to you and I'll try and net them. Hey! <laughs> nice. Good job, buddy. Awesome. That's dinner right there. Well, we managed to get a couple nice eaters here. And uh, Jackson had a nice one too, and Dad let him jump kind of out of his hands into the water. But we got plenty for dinner. So we figured out they were biting crawler harnesses. And uh, it was slow fishing, but we got a few. So. All right, guys, I think we've covered the top four species that people go after in the boundary waters. Now let's cover the bonus species, number five, and that is stream trout in stocked trout lakes. Um, these fish are an absolute blast to catch. You can get the list from the Minnesota DNR website on which lakes are stocked with which trout. And it's typically rainbows and brook trout, but there are some browns stocked in these lakes. And they get big. I'm talking well over 20 inches. Uh, we've caught them, um, rainbows and brook trout up there. So the best way to catch them is to set up a slip bobber rig with a crawler and set it six to eight feet below the surface. You don't have to be on structure or near bottom because these fish will roam the water column just like lake trout will. Um, although I have had better luck fishing shorelines. And if you see trout rising, um, definitely go over and try that area because you know there's trout around. So you can cast spoons or small spinners for them as well um, or troll. Uh, one little known secret actually is to catch really big brook trout, we have trolled the same spinner and crawler harnesses that we troll for walleyes. And uh, that's one of the best ways to cover water and, and give them that crawler with a little bit of flash to attract them. And that works really well. And uh, I would definitely recommend giving that a try because these fish are an absolute blast to catch and they're delicious as well. So fun for kids, lots of action. All right, Jackson and I just paddled into a little stream trout lake and we just set up a slip bobbers here and see if we can get a few stream trout this evening and uh, mostly rainbows in here from what I understand so we're just setting them like 10 feet down we'll start there and uh, we've already seen some trout rippling around us so we know they're in here okay first rainbow on nice little guy little eater another rainbow there we go. Nice. Two for two. Jackson just missed one, so. All right, we got three rainbows down, and uh, we can keep a total of 10 of these, so hopefully we can get seven more before it gets dark here, but we're figuring it out. We've, we're dropping our bobbers about six to eight feet down under the surface, and that seems to be doing the trick. Fish on. I got one here. Jackson's got one there. Flip, just flip them in the canoe. Ooh, that's a nice one too. Hey, nice job. Nice job. Doubled up, doubled up. Jackson's on him. Jackson's on him. That'll be number six if you land him. Why don't you worry about landing that one before we start counting him? Oh, I got my, got my. Ooh, this is the biggest one. This one yet. Whoa. Oh, look at that one. I got a huge one. <laughs> you got a bluegill? I got a nice fat one. Look at that guy. That's a beaut. Beautiful little rainbows here. Good eating. Awesome fish. Fun to catch. Kids love them. It's a good time. We got two left to go, but don't think we'll have any trouble getting our last two here. Stop. Got him. Another keeper. Oh yeah. One more, buddy. All right, we just caught our limit of 10. Nice rainbows. These are uh, stocked trout. 
put and take. These things are gonna be delicious. And all we did was slip over them six to eight feet down along the shoreline. You just look for ripples, look for uh, looks for fish kind of coming up and surfacing. And uh, there was a ton of them in here, so it wasn't too difficult, but it was a lot of fun, huh, buddy? Yeah. So hopefully that covers pretty much everything you need to go to just go up and catch a whole bunch of fish in the BWCA. Um, you can certainly watch one of these two videos to learn more about some of these techniques and maybe we'll see you up there. Get hooked up guys. Jackson and I just found a new island. We're exploring. Not sure what we found here, but don't forget to love each other. Not much love in the bushes there.